Hey guys and welcome to another Chameleon tutorial. This time we'll be discussing a uh, the uh, version of the editor which you'll find online on our website, which is currently in a beta version. And uh, I'll show you, I'll walk you through the new interface and uh, also teach you how to create a uh, new quick map. So, without further ado, this is the editor interface. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta go online. The link is in the description. Log on to the editor, or if you already if you don't have an account, create a new one, or log into Facebook. And this is where it will be. Uh, I have a list of maps here, which of course you won't have if you haven't done any map. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to, uh, you want to want to create a new map. So first of all, give your new map a name. I'm just going to name it sample map. There we go. And just make sure it's 2D. I'm going to use 2D for this demonstration. But of course, you can also make 2.5D or isometric maps with Gamelian. This is the new Gamelian interface. Um, First of all, uh, what you're going to have to what you're going to see is uh, to the left you have all the tools that you need. To the right you'll have like the navigator, and you also have some circumstantial buttons depending on the mode. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to upload the map image to use. But of course, if you've just started using Gamelian, you won't have any map image. So what you want to do is you want to go to this green button over here. It's called Help and Support. And it's going to pop up a list of other four buttons. The first one is called Get Resources. It's going to take you to a Google Drive folder, which contains a lot of um, uh, useful bits and pieces, uh, such as, for example, what we need, which is um, maps, essentially, images and maps. I'm just going to select two of these, which I'm going to need, and I'm going to download them. You're, you're going to do exactly the same. The uh, Google Drive folder is public for all the uh, beta testers. After you've downloaded all these photos, we're going to go to the folder where we've downloaded them, which is here, and we're going to upload them to our map. First, the, the first map that you're actually going to need is the one that's called the um, uh, outside level. So I'm just going to drag this image into the editor. It's going to finish uploading it. And to your right, you're going to see the navigator. Now, we have a concept called outside map and inside map in Gamelian. What that concept is, <clears throat> It's essentially a sort of a phasing mechanic. So you can have uh, the same map that your player walks through. It can look uh, uh, it can look differently depending on where your player is standing on or, or other certain events. In our case, we have a map of a boat which has some obscured rooms, and when the player walks into those obscured rooms, they become uh, they become visible. But every every the other the corridors and every other room that he could see previously are now obscured. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. We're going to go to the navigator here on the right. <laughs> And there's a layer called Map Inside. And we're going to go back to the folder. We have the pictures. Grab the Map Inside image and drag it on top. And there we have it. Now we have the version of the map that is essentially what the player would see when he goes into the areas that were previously obscured. So I can just switch to these uh, uh, mode, to these images just so I can show you the differences. Now, um, We have another concept called Map Limbo and Map Limbo Inside. Essentially, Limbo is just another version of this whole switching between inside and outside, but it's a version of a map that only players who have... Uh, uh, when a player's character dies, he goes to this Limbo realm. This is a, a concept that we've taken from Bactopia, which is our initial game. And of course, it's just a name. You don't have to put any Limbo map. It doesn't affect your map in any way. But uh, the cool part is just learning how to use these inside and outside maps uh, uh, properly and you know, to get cool effects. And of course, you'll be able to add in the final version of Chameleon, you will, you'll be able to add like all sorts of extra um, layers, name them however you want, just so you could make this switching thing going on. So uh, without further ado, the thing you want to do first is you go back to your map. <clears throat> and uh, of course, you uh, start creating polygons. And what, the poly what polygons are, you, you'll see in a second. Basically, when you start the editor, before you do anything else, you're going to notice you're in a, a polygon mode. It's a big PM icon right there. What this means is this is in the mode of the editor, which allows you to create the polygons, which actually define where players can walk and where they can't. So, for example, when I'm in the polygon mode and I have the Create Polygons tool selected, every time I click, I simply just create a, a, poly a number of nodes. And then when I, when I hit Shift, I close the I close the polygon. So here again, if I click a point, it creates a node. I can keep creating as many nodes as I'd like, and I can either hit the Shift key or click Finish Polygon right here. 
and it creates a complete polygon. And of course, uh, using the polygon edit tool, I can actually select these polygons and uh, reshape them, change them, or actually delete them. So next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna want to start creating your polygons for your map, right? So um, I'm gonna just like a very basic, simple map. I'm not gonna get very complicated. Uh, I'll be sure to um, assign nodes though to every uh, point of interest, like every intersection, every door that you create, you're gonna have to create nodes that flank it and such. I'll create like uh, a polygon for each room, roughly following the um, roughly following the detail on the image itself. So I use the image as a guide. So I'm just going to create these polygons. There we go. Now these polygons are the same for uh, for every every uh, mode that uh, every layer of your map so regardless of whether or not i'm i'm in an inside polygon or in an outside polygon um sorry regardless of whether or not i'm on an inside map or an outside map layer the polygons are actually universal so they're the same for every map layer regardless you can see as i'm scrolling through them that they're the same polygons and now to take advantage of the inside map and outside map thing, I'm going to basically, um, these are, so I'm going to go to the uh, layer of the map, which is the map inside layer. And I'm going to see that only certain areas of the map are visible. So for example, this uh, big polygon right here is going to be visible. So I'm just going to make sure that it's an, um, it's an inside polygon. And the way to do that is I go to the right hand corner of the screen and I select inside and it becomes an inside polygon. I do the same with all the other rooms that I want to be inside. So basically I've turned this room, this room, and this room as sort of inside polygons. And you know what, actually I'm going to think I'm going to make this room as well. Because it's obscured usually when, uh, when uh, in the normal map. Now that I've done this, I'm going to hit save. Just hit either control S or there's a uh, save uh, icon right there on the left hand side of the screen in the middle of the screen. It's going to take just slightly longer to save the map the first time around because it's going to upload the images, but after that it's going to be just peachy. And uh, now that I've created this, the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to add uh, objects to the game. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object. Uh, I forgot to tell you, what you got to do is to create objects, you got to get away from the polygon mode and now you do that by switching to object mode. You do that by switching tab to by pressing tab or either just pressing like uh, up here where it says polygon or just click and a pop-up will appear and just click object mode or hit tab like I do. Um, this is the mode where you actually create objects, you create scripting, you create uh, uh, AI behaviors, you add uh, looks to your objects. And the first thing you want to do is just want to create an object. For example, I'm just going to create a, I'm going to hit the new object button right here. And I'm going to click anywhere on the map, say here. And what we have here is uh, obviously a new object. Now this is just a, I'm going to save again. This is actually just a standard object. It's got no functionality. I haven't defined it as anything. It doesn't even have a skin. And the way I make a skin is you can either create, uh, you can either use the skins that we've provided or use some of the skins that I've um, I showed you in this folder. So um, I have uh, in the Google Drive folder, I have a part of the part of this uh, folder is a, another subfolder called skins, 2D skins. Since we're making a 2D map, this is what I need. So I'm just going to uh, view the archive that's, uh, that's in, uh, in this folder. And you can see there's a whole, just a whole bunch of images. But what I want to do is I want to actually download the entire archive. So once we've uh, downloaded the skin folder, the next thing you want to do is to go to the downloads folder where you've downloaded your skins and extract the archive. And you'll see basically a list of uh, all sorts of skins just grouped into folders. And in order to make a new skin for your um, for your uh, monster or whatever it is you want to be, I'm gonna, I want to make it a monster. I'm just going to select one of these and I'm going to select the, uh, I don't know, the Space Marine, for example. <clears throat> which has two animations, attack and walk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the skin editor right there in the uh, object mode. 
and I'm gonna hit the this is the skin editor interface I'm gonna hit new skin I'm gonna give it a uh, space soldier name I'm gonna give it a new name sorry forgot you can't can't uh, put spaces yet there we go I've created a new skin called space soldier and now uh, this is the part where you put portraits uh, a portrait is what the player sees when he selects a unit in game it's another ref leftover from Octopia, which is not uh, its not actually essential. It's probably going to go away in the final version. But what you care about is this. This is where you put your like uh, animations. So as we look back at the skin, we have three animations. Attack animation, walk animation, and just an idle image. So I have an idle animation, a new animation I'm going to call attack, and a new animation I'm going to call walk. I'm just going to upload images for each and every one of them. I'm going to desell. I'm going to click the image that was default on idle, which because the game, the editor uh, gives you a default uh, first image for the skin. And I'm going to take the, the idle image. I'm just going to put it there. I'm going to go to attack. Go to go to my attack folder. Grab all the images. Drop them in the attack slot. Go to my walk animation. Take all the images. Drop them in my walk animation. And then I'm going to hit save the skin. There you go, and then I'm going to hit the green button. Here it says set skin to select object. Which means I just put my skin onto my object. Cool. Now I'm going to want to make this marine sort of move around. Now I'm going to add some uh, behavior. I'm going to add some AI to this monster. I just want it to sort of patrol around the map that I've just created. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, go to this button right here. It says NPC behavior on the right side of the screen, the contextual menu that appears when I actually select an object right here. I'm going to click NPC behavior. And it's going to open up the behavior interface, <clears throat> which is this. Basically, it's a, it's a scrollable tree of all the events and actions that a NPC can do. On the left side, the uh, left-hand side of the screen, this is basically just the list of actions and uh, uh, things uh, it can recognize as triggers. And I want it to start moving around the map at the moment uh, it spawns onto the map. Now, since I placed it already on the map, it spawns when the map is played. So the um, event that I'm interested in, this one called on after init, which means when the event is initialized. So to add a patrol behavior, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close this behavior editor for a second. And in object mode, I have this tool called the path tool. Basically, I click it, and just like when creating polygons, I just click some nodes that I can sort of just close with the shift key. Now, this is just a path. I can name it. I can call it the soldier path. There you go. <clears throat> and uh, with this uh, path in mind, I'm just going to go go back to my object. I'm going to... Uh, click the hand icon to select my object. I'm gonna click the object. Gonna go to NPC behavior. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait up for the interface to load up. And on the after init event right here, on after init, which means after the monster is initialized, which happens every time the map is spawned, I'm gonna double click. And this is the action. This is where I actually select what happens. Um, on the right hand side, you'll see a scrollable list of all the things that this uh, monster can do on these actions. And I'm interested in an, in an action that's way down. I gotta scroll. I'm in the character menu. I'm gonna go and find the NPC behavior menu. There you go. And I have something here called Patrol Aggressive Loop. I'm just gonna double click it and it just added it automatically to its actions. So now that I've created this action, I need, I need to tell it uh, what the object that I'm interested in is. And since I have the Marie, the space soldier already selected, I'm just going to click NPC object. It's going to automatically tell tell the editor that this is the object I'm talking about. And then when I, I need to choose a path, I just double click move path. And to the left hand side of the screen, it's currently just temporary. It's going to move to the center. I have a list of paths. But since I only have one path on this map, I'm going to click confirm. And that's it. Then I'm going to hit save. <clears throat> And I want to see this in game, right? Now that the behavior has been saved, I'm going to close this little window. I'm going to go back to polygon mode. And in polygon mode, or actually in object mode as well, but in polygon mode it's more visible, you have this flag map, flag icon. Basically, this sets a start area, basically where the player spawns in the game. So I'm going to hit this button. It's going to uh, make a little icon float on my cursor. I'm going to place where I want the player to start when he enters this map. I'm just going to put it right here. <clears throat> 
I'm gonna make sure that the Space Marine, I'm gonna go to the Space Marine, to the Object Mode, I'm gonna select the Space Marine, and there's a label here called Object Attributes, which is basically all the attributes and properties of the object, and it's just loaded with a, a pre, the preset level number of attributes which you can change or add. But it does have an attribute called Speed, which I'm gonna set to like five or six, I'm just gonna set five, to make sure that the object can actually move after uh, uh, being placed on the map. I'm gonna hit Save. <clears throat> Uh, now that we've uh, finished uh, placing our object, giving it a skin, creating a patrol path, putting the behavior on, creating all our polygons, we're ready to publish and play our map. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hit publish, which is this button over here in the left hand side of the screen. It's accessible in both the polygon mode and the object mode. Just uh, hit publish. It's gonna, you're going to get a realm list, but right now there's only one realm. Just hit publish on the only available server. It's going to be done in a few seconds. Right now it's pushing the map content on the online server. There you go. Now the only thing I have left to do is to play, uh, press the play button, which is underneath the save button. And it's going to take me to a uh, character selection screen. Now we do have a shortcut for this. The reason that you have this character selection screen is because uh, the feature to create your own character selection screen, your own uh, character classes, uh, the support to create a new character in your game is still being developed. So as a shortcut, whenever you try to test one of your maps for the moment, you'll get the Bactopia character selection screen. Bactopia is one of the games we've created. One of the, actually, the first game we've ever made with Chameleon. So this is just a, sh a temporary shortcut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my Bactopia characters. I'm going to double click them. And it's going to instantly teleport me to the map I've just created. And there you have it. Essentially, this is it. This is the map I've just created in the editor. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. There you go. And um, you, you can see the NPC that I've created is uh, patrolling around on the path that I've made. Um, yep, there you go. He disappears when he goes onto an uh, inside polygon because right now I'm on the outside map, which uses the outside map image that I've created. And uh, if I switch to an inside polygon, it's going to switch to the inside map. So let me show you how that works. Basically, like phasing. I'm going to go into this room and it's going to switch the maps just like that. It's like a phasing. All of a sudden, it's replaced. And I don't see anything that's on an inside polygon if I'm on an outside polygon. And if I'm on an in, uh, outside polygon, I don't see anything that's on an inside polygon. I'm talking about objects and such. It's kind of like visibility or phasing or whichever way you want to use this cool feature. You can find a way to just sort of implement it in your game. Whichever way, everywhere I go in a polygon that I have defined as an inside polygon, it just switches maps. There you go. So basically, this is it. Thank you for watching. Um, of course, remember that the editor has uh, many more features that are on the live version and you can do a lot more stuff with scripting and skins and maps and so forth. But this is a very simple uh, video to get you started. Remember, if, we have, if you have any questions, there's always the uh, in editor help feature. Just click help and support. And we have the last button here is for submitting bugs, features or, you know, contacting us in any way. And you have like a link to the website, a link to the community where you can find the forum and other people testing the product as well. And of course, the resources. So don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions and uh, have fun testing.